Hello viewers, I'm SB, and welcome to Beacon Pines. Um, I think this is both, uh, like, sort of cute and sort of spooky. I have intentionally not learned very much about this, because I've been, I've been eagerly awaiting release. Uh, but this is, uh, this is gonna be an adorable little narrative adventure that also, yeah, is maybe gonna have a, a slightly dark tone. So let's go find out exactly what it is together, shall we? Dear reader, allow me to introduce you to my book. Though it might at first appear like many books you've come across, it is far from ordinary. You may therefore have some misunderstandings about its nature. The story that awaits you has not been fully told. In fact, its conclusion is not yet known, even to myself. So a thing that's interesting about this is that um, it pauses at the end of every sentence. I have to actually press space to get it to say the next thing, which for the purposes of this format, I actually really like. It's going to let me insert my commentary very easily. So much appreciated, developer. It is in that way that my book is special. It is in that way that you are special. Aw. Without you... There is no story. Chapter one. Normal isn't what it used to be. This is a story about change. Nestled in a shallow valley is the town of Beacon Pines. Far from the town square, across the river, past the neglected welcome sign, a young boy walks alone at dawn. His name is Luca Van Horn, and like you, dear reader, he's here for a reason. Okay, hi, we're Luca. Look, look, we have horns, and thus the name. Hey, Dad. How are things going? Today's the first day of summer vacation. I start middle school next year, I guess. I was six years old when you died. And it's been six years now. And from here on out, you'll have been gone longer than you were here. Feels like that should mean something. Mom always said that this tree was your favorite spot in the world. Me too. Hey, Luca. I knew I'd find you here. Rolo was Luca's closest friend. He possessed many fine qualities, but subtlety was not one of them. Also, Rolo is an adorable name. Well, after I banged on your door till your grand answered. And after I checked the pond. And, and climbed up to the treehouse. Then I knew I'd find you here. Rolo finally noticed the tears swelling in his friend's eyes. And the flowers on the grave. Oh, yeah, right. You and your mom always did this on your dad's birthday. Yeah. I, I didn't know if you were going to keep doing it now that your mom's gone, too. Oh, harsh. She's not gone. She's just... missing. So sorry, I meant to say since she went missing. She's going to come back, Rolo. Of course, of course she is. Okay, Dad. See you next time. I think I'm ready to get out of here. Sure, lead the way. Is there any other stuff around here for us to interact with? I like these little, these little like, I like the vignetting of it. The way that they didn't draw in the rest of the world around it. It's just the bit that is relevant to the storybook page. This is a cool graphical style. Oh, we can scatter the puffballs. Oh. <laughs> uh, okay. T tickle. Wonderful. I had a good feeling about you from the moment you opened my book. That charm is a very special thing. Very special indeed. Keep hold of it for now. Its purpose will reveal itself soon enough. Huh. Okay, well, the puffballs grow back, so we're not going to be able to scatter all of them. But if it was possible, you know that I would do it. I'm still kind of, you know. All right, I'm going to stop messing with this. 
Oh, yeah, I almost forgot. The whole reason I was looking for you. I was wondering if you'd ever get to that. I found the perfect way to start our summer. How's that? Frollo looked to the side suspiciously. No, not here. They might be watching. They who? Shh, not so loud. We need to do this in a secure location. Mission control. All right, I just have to tell Gran and then we can head out. What are you going to tell her? I don't know. I'll think of something. If it's all the same to you, I'll meet you at the welcome sign. Your grand still kind of wigs me out. I don't do well with new people. Yo, Rolo, big same. <laughs> she moved in like half a year ago. Just meet me at the sign when you're done. Eh, suit yourself. I won't be long. Okay. So we have a page of objectives and a page of charms, apparently. And I'm just going to look around the game world a little bit for more things that are charming. Oh, look, I found it. It's, it's all of it. Dear reader, forgive me for this interlude. Remember that charm you found in the dandelion patch? There are more of those special charms to discover throughout Beacon Pines. They've been known to reveal themselves to those who are willing. Some of them can be found in this very house. Listen, you don't have to tell me to touch every object in the video game. <laughs> Way ahead of you. Can I inspect the broom? What if we get a broom charm? Since Gran had moved in, the house was more peaceful, more orderly, and more covered in flowery fabric. Did she just bring her own? One of his father's old stethoscopes. Luca had spent countless hours listening to anything and everything with it. Not for years, though. <laughs> and I guess we'll, we'll just sit here pondering until I press a button. That's very cute. She kept a warm house, as if by grandmotherly obligation. So, my guess is Gran is in this room over here that is lit and everything. Let's go upstairs first. I want to look around. Luca paused at his parents' bedroom door. He just wasn't ready to go in yet. This poor kid seems to have had a really rough go of it so far. Gran had commandeered the upstairs closet when she moved in. Some things need shelter from a young boy's mischief, she said. Well, now that is very curious. Extremely, extremely suspicious. Luca tossed on his favorite old sweater. Even though it was the <laughs> first day of summer, a chill still hung in the air. Moving in meant that most of Luca's things had been crammed in the corner. Luca was somewhat annoyed by the situation. Okay, I think that's all we're gonna. Oh, no, never mind. Grand's bed. Grand's bed was undisturbed. Luca didn't mind that she had a habit of falling asleep in front of the fireplace, it meant that he could read late into the night. Okay, I can jump, which I had apparently not noticed until just now. I was looking for, like, a run. I think this is as fast as our little hooves can take us. Hmm. Maybe she's, like, out in the garden. ...of prepared meals crowded the refrigerator, each labeled with the day of the week. Oh, close the fridge. Okay. A pair of dull scissors, a broken can opener, a mostly empty bottle of glue, and some loose string. I wonder if something happens if you actually do leave the I'm going to I'm going to be good and not leave the fridge open. Okay, so once you've interacted with the thing once, you no longer get the prompt. You just have to remember that you can 
I am gonna leave the water running. We're gonna see if if it has any uh, if anything happens. We might get yelled at. The only piece of furniture Gran had brought when she moved in was an old hutch. And whatever cool secret stuff she's storing in the upstairs closet. Can I jump on the table? No. Child has a. Oops, shit. <laughs> Child has a. Not a realistic vertical, but a less video gamey oh vertical. My. This is quite exciting. I am now certain that you are the one I've been waiting for all these years. You'll recall I was a bit coy regarding the use of charms earlier. Excuse me. I tend to have a flair for the dramatic. You are about to encounter your first turning point. There are certain times in this tale when everything hinges on a single word. Step forth, dear reader. A sturdy old wheelbarrow. I will say, the, the fact that the narration moves forward when I press the button does make the pacing a little bit weird because I am not patient enough to wait the, like, the appropriate amount of time between sentences and it does make her sound somewhat rushed. Young Luca would spend hours hiding in the bushes, waiting for a chance to jump out and startle his mother. She always enjoyed humoring him by feigning terror. Kind of a weird kid. A beginner's guide to gardening laid open on the bench. Apparently this is not, uh, this is not how Gran usually rolls. Maybe she doesn't have a house with a big garden. Hey Gran, I'm gonna go, ha go hang with Rolo for the day. See you later. Hold up now. Where are you and Rolo headed exactly? Uh, nowhere special. The less Gran knew, the better for everyone involved. Also, I don't even know, so... We were just gonna go a heart for the day. We were just gonna go love. Oh. Interesting. Um. I mean, this feels like the natural thing to say, right? We were just gonna go chill for the day. The best lies are built on truth. <laughs> You boys are always in a hurry to do nothing. <laughs> we stick to what we're good at. Well, make sure you are done chilling in time for supper. Easy. Impressive. You've managed to navigate your first turning point without too much of a mess. That is the power of charms. A single word can change everything. I think it's time to introduce you to the Chronicle. The Chronicle is a record of the decisions you've made. You can see the turning point which has been revealed. At any time, you can use the Chronicle to go back and invoke different charms, creating new branches. Luckily for us, this is the one and only turning point where the charms won't dramatically alter fate. It's the perfect opportunity to experiment with rewriting things. <laughs> That's a cute name for it. We were just going to go ponder for the day is a somewhat unusual use of the word ponder. We were just going to go ponder for the day. I feel like generally ponder has an object, right? Oh, really? What were you guys, boys going to ponder on such a lovely day exactly? This was Luca's chance to sell his alibi. Um, you know... B big stuff, small stuff, me medium, m mostly mostly medium pondering. Nailed it. Well, make sure you don't overburden yourself with a preponderance of pondering. Huh? <sighs> Forget it. Off with you now. Gran has no patience for people who don't appreciate her wordplay. And I get it. I am fully on her side in this. Oh, and Luca. You and Rolo stay out of trouble. I know, I know. Yep, that's... <laughs> Thank you. 
I know, but I, I guess I appreciate having it written down. I'm leaving the water on. I want to see if we get yelled at. But I, I feel like leaving the fridge open is like a step too far. There's mayhem and then there's like havoc, right? Ooh, ooh. Holy crow, R Rolo, calm down. Come on, come on. Woo! Dang it, Rolo. For a town that saw few visitors, the welcome was perhaps more grand than necessary. I mean, we're definitely gonna go check out what Rolo's up to. The road leading to Beacon Pines was long and uninspiring. A sort of natural barrier for the impatient. <laughs> Classic GM move. I, you don't want to go that way. It's boring over there. You know the drill. Don't let anyone discover our secret path. Rolo, our secret path has a road sign pointing at it. Welcome to Beacon Pines. For many years, this valley had been a small mining outpost. It wasn't until Sharper Valentine built his fertilizer company that Beacon Pines was established. Over the next 30 years, the town had grown and prospered until the foul harvest and his sudden death. In the six years since, everyone was simply trying to get by. Well, now that's interesting. Hey, Mr. Kerr. Hey there, pal. William Kerr was the CEO Kerr. of Perennial Harvest Company. He had become a fixture around town over the past few years. After the failing of Valentine Fertilizer, the town was hungry to welcome a new source of employment. Excited for the big festival? Oh, um, sure. Come on now, when I was your age, there was nothing more exciting than a town festival. The food, the music, the dancing. Yeah, it sounds pretty all right. You're gosh dang right it is. I'm looking forward to letting off some steam myself. I do not like I do not like the way he has eyebrowed at us while saying that. That is concerning. Make sure to invite all of your little friends. Is he supposed to be a hyena? I dig his design very much. This is this is a good look. Oh, I couldn't keep Rolo away if I tried. <laughs> Excellent. Sorry, Luca. I've got to get back to the proverbial grindstone. Our harvest awaits and all that. Ho now! The left side's a little low. Okay, just abandon the conversation you were in. <sighs> Sorry, young Mr. Van Horn. I can't talk now. Very busy preparations. Mayor Augustus Valentine was not busy. He doesn't, yeah, he doesn't look it. Oh, sorry, Gus. How many times do I... It's, it's Mayor Valent... Uh. Flustered, Gus instinctively loosened his tie. What, even further? It's gonna fall off. Uh, keep up the good work. I must briefly attend to a concerned citizen. It's nothing. Just keep at it. All right. What can the mayor of Beacon Pines do for you today? Oh, just, uh, just saying hi, I guess. Hmm. Well, good day to you too, young Mr. Van Horn. Can I interact with this lector? I cannot. All right, we're definitely going to go to mission control. That's going to happen for sure. But first... Everything else. <laughs> I love that there is a dedicated, let's just like chill out and try to look cool icon. Just so you know. You know when there is an opportunity for that about. Can I break into this building? I cannot. Hey, Mr. Sinclair. Mr. Sinclair continued snoring and lifted one eyelid just enough to see who it was. A tactic he often used to avoid undesirable conversation. I I feel a great kinship with Mr. Sinclair. You, Mr. Sinclair. <sighs> Don't you see I'm sleeping, boy? How's the napping today? Crummy, as always. I used to have a perfectly nice view from here. 
that pere uh, till perennial harvest put that monstrosity of a building in the way. Well, why don't you just move your chair a bit? Why should I be the one that moves? If it's a showdown they want, I ain't gonna be the one who blinks. Yeah, I think you're um in sort of a one-sided fight there, Mr. Sinclair. Come on, Andy, grab his wallet. I'm sorry, Iggy, I can't. Do it or we pound you. Yep. Yeah, but, but my mom said, yeah, but, yeah, but. If I had a nickel for every yeah, but, I'd be the freaking king of nickels. That is not how, okay, that's fine. It's not how, it's not how royalty works, really. Ain't that right, Tish? Yep. Mr. Van Horn, do you have a moment? It's just Luca. Golly, I'm sorry. It's my first week at Perennial Harvest. He pulled a pen from the pocket of his sweater vest and began to frantically jot something down on a clipboard. He's taking a note not to call me Mr. Van Horn. Wonderful. It won't happen again. If we're going to be on a first name basis, then you can call me Pete. Oh, nice to meet you, Pete. Sorry, what are you writing? Oh, just documenting. Gosh, it's exciting to be a part of something so darn special. You know, it's not just about new fountains and phone booths. We're going to change the world. And it all starts here, in Beacon Pines. Isn't that amazing? Uh-huh. Yeah, um, anyway, I I'd better get... Oh, that reminds me. We'd love to hear your thoughts. My thoughts? Well, you bet. If we're going to change this town, we need to get every detail right. That sounds intense. <laughs> Changing the world is intense. So, what do you say? Could you answer a few questions? Well, I guess if it's quick. Wonderful. Uh, open to answering a few quick questions. Ah, one down. See, it's not that hard, is it? Wait, that was the first... Okay. Uh, oh, okay, we're going already. Question two. What is something you love about Beacon Pines? Hmm, I've never really thought about it before. Perfect. It's the only place I've lived. See, that wasn't so painful. Pete stopped scribbling and glanced up from the clipboard. Was it? Um, I guess not. Huzzah! Our first three questions answered in record time. There is no way that was on the clipboard. Are you literally writing down everything? <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. I need to process these answers. We can save the rest of your thoughts for later. Okay. Our harvest awaits. That's a very creepy motto for the company. I, I can definitely see this is... I can see the creepiness creeping in around the edges already. Oh, right. Rolo's waiting up at the treehouse. I mean, I know, but... Alright. Let's be very nonchalant about this. Okay, I guess that's the most nonchalant I can do that. What is this? Ah, that's the mission control sign. Authorized personnel only. But first... Hey, Jetson. Is the line playing any tunes today? Uh, no bites this morning, I'm afraid. Come to think of it, I can't remember the last time I reeled one in. Ah, but hey, it was never about the catch. This is where I come to think. Yeah, that's what my dad used to do here. That reminds me. If you ever want his chair back, I've taken to standing recently. It keeps me from falling asleep at the reel. If you don't mind, I think it should stay. Hmm, not at all. An empty chair makes for a great listener. Whenever Luca saw his dad's chair by the pond, it reminded him of the days they'd pack up a couple of sandwiches and fish until sundown. Even younger Luca, somehow even more adorable. Luca opened the tackle box and picked the perfect bait. Um, 
I am uncertain how to apply tickle as bait, so I'm uh, this. We're choosing this because I don't know what's going to happen. Gently baited a feather onto the hook. Okay, this is sort of a broad conceptual. I, I get it. I get it. Good for skimming the surface. Yeah, it'll look like delicious uh, fish bug. Do, do fish eat bugs? How do fish work? I give it a good cast now. Okay, I see, I see. Oops. Well, I have to reel it in a bit faster. Or your catch will lose interest. Okay, that's good. Uh, yeah, I can do this. Luca gently baited a feather onto the hook. Good for skimming the surface. Alright, we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it right this time. see the line turning red trying very hard not to break it oh. that's what I I don't I'm not sure I understand the mechanics of that well I'll be switched it's your old rubber ducky you were just a little drooling ball of fur when you lost that cried for days I told you it'd turn up that doesn't well, that doesn't make any sense at all I cannot interact with duck. All right, let's try some junk. Luca tied a shoestring to the hook. What fish could resist a nice shoestring? I am extremely bad at fishing. Where do you think the other one is? Hard to say. Sometimes things drift away. Well, that's not fair. No, it's not. Well, wherever it is, I hope that other boot at least has a sock to keep it company. Luca, you are too pure for this world. Okay, more fishing. The thing is, I have done all of these. Hold on, okay. Luca gently baited first. We're gonna put another. We're gonna put another feather on. Okay, I can't walk any further over here. I'm kind of curious if there's any more charms around this memory. Oh, okay. I could just exit the memory. Hold on. Can I go back in? I'm curious if there is more stuff to find. Luca gently good for skimming. We'll just give this like one more try here. Okay, it's just that we, we catch the same thing. But in theory, we can come back to this memory later once we have more charms, right? This is a really interesting design for a narrative game. Ooh, very menacing. Also, do they have a plunger gun on the roof? Man, this is a good treehouse. Excellent job, they kids. had a good thing going. As long as they kept old Jeff happy, they had an endless source of precious materials to add to the treehouse. <laughs> Dedicated lounging pose. Very important. You gotta remember what childhood's all about, right? After Luca's father had passed, Rolo became obsessed with them building their own Hank Atomic Star Scraper. It was some time before Luca realized it was Rolo's way of keeping him occupied. Ah, Rolo seems like a real sweetheart. On certain nights, when the clouds were just right, the boys could tune into strange patterns of static. Rolo thinks it's aliens. He always thinks it's aliens. Like I was saying, the perfect friend. Luca's winter coat decommissioned for the summer. With the cold holding out longer than usual, he reconsidered its usefulness. Okay, what's this top secret plan to start our summer? So, you know the abandoned warehouse by my place? The old Valentine building. 
Yeah, well, it isn't abandoned. What makes you think that? Get this. Last night, it was glowing. Glowing? Are you sure? Kinda. That place has been empty since... Since the foul harvest? Yeah. Who would even want to poke around that place? We would, Rolo. We would. Wait, 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 wait. It's just a busted old warehouse. I, I just meant we could do some research at the library. You want to actually go to the warehouse? What do you expect to find? Answers. My mom's out there somewhere, and it seems like everyone wants to pretend that she's gone for good. Y you don't have to come, Rello, if you don't want to. <sighs> Luca, remember that time I sort of accidentally burned down the chicken coop? And you jumped in and said it was your fault before my pa throttled me? This is a flaming chicken coop sort of deal. I've got your back. Thanks, Rollo. Now that I think about it, poking around a decrepit fertilizer warehouse is exactly how I want to spend the first day of summer. <laughs> like I said, the perfect friend. No, wait, no, I don't want to close it. I want to, okay. But can I get some more information on old Jeff? Is there, <laughs> is there anything else here to be learned? Doesn't seem like it. Well, shoot, where'd Rolo go? Okay. I'm just catching catch, catch my breath a bit. Go on, I'll, I'll catch up. Aw, oh, poor buddy. See, here's the thing, I would just wait. I would just be nice and wait with my friend. But clearly that is not what the video game wants us to do. Last Chance Diner. Fulton Wilder ran the local paper of record, the Beacon Beacon. Hey, Mr. Wilder. Morning, Luca. What's the day have in store for you? I was wondering if you heard any news about... News? The Beacon Beacon knows the news that needs knowing. Any news about the old fertilizer warehouse? Nope. Oh. Uh, Rolo thought he saw some lights there last night. Hmm, Rolo ought to be careful poking around that part of town. The winds of change are blowing, and change is a dangerous animal. <laughs> I really, I really, maybe it's just because of the way that I had sort of primed myself based on the little bit that I do know, but I really like the tone they're striking so far. It's very, like, idyllic in childhood, but with that sense of menace just barely visible. Luca could see the morning regulars nestled in their booths at the early beam. The early beam is cute. Hey, Mrs. Nelson. Morning, Luca. Any big plans for the summer? Not really. Have you heard anything about the old fertilizer warehouse? Any strange happenings? Uh, I can't say I have. Either way, a dusty old warehouse is no place for a young boy. You be safe now. I feel like a dusty warehouse is exactly the kind of place a young boy wants to be. Although I guess I get what she means. Uh, I definitely remember when I was younger, my brother playing around sort of a... a not a dusty warehouse exactly, but definitely like an abandoned building. Uh, and accidentally stepping on a board that had a nail pounded through it. And the nail going all the way, yeah, that was, that was pretty bad. Miss Hatch could often be found near the fountain, too absorbed in a book to be distracted. The two wandered down the wooded path, unaware of the danger ahead. Oh, oh, this is getting good. I already love Mrs. Hatch. Ooh, check this out. Um, Piper? Oh, hey, Luca, what's up? You know it's summer break, right? <laughs> of course. And it's like the morning? Correct. And you're studying? <sighs> like they say, the early bird gets the proper education required for a successful and fulfilling career later in life. 
Mm-hmm. Hey, Zariel. Hi, Yaluka. Could you please tell this lazy butt to help out in the cafe? Um, Lumi, Zariel would like you... Luca, let me give you a little gem of advice. If you never do what you don't love, then you'll never work a day in your life. Wow. You're really setting the kid up for success. I don't know how she thought I was going to be able to help. Twelve-year-olds have very little authority in the world. And I mean, you know, it's for the best, but... Gosh. There are so many NPCs, and I'm so bad at voice work. Luca, just the fella I was looking for. Hey, Roxy, what's up? Oh, right. Rendezvous with Roxy. This is an important turning point. The first time where your charms will change the course of fate. And currently, we only have one suitable charm at our disposal. Have no fear, we can always return later using the Chronicle once we find more charms. Well, now I'm just rambling. Where were we? Have you seen my blockhead brother today? He skipped out before breakfast. Well... Not really, no. I can't, can't say I have. Can't say? Or won't say. Roxy, would I lie to you? That's good. Okay, that's great timing there, buddy. Luca, wait up. I almost forgot to tell you. Roxy might be lurking around here. Well, this is one of her favorite places to stand around and be useless. Rolo. So we need to make sure she doesn't spot us. Rolo. Why are you doing that turning thing with your body? What, you're not scared, are you? She's harmless. And a chump. And she's right around that corner, isn't she? Okay. Look, I did it. Hooray. Objective achieved. Uh, don't mind me. Just over here lurking. Uselessly. Oh, hey, sis. What nice weather we're having, huh? I couldn't help but notice you snuck out before breakfast. I, I wasn't hungry. Also, couldn't help but notice your morning chores were left unchored. Roxy, I'm gonna level with you. I'm sick and tired of digging up carrots. We all gotta pick up the slack since the foul harvest. Almost every carrot I dig up is rotten. And the rest look like they were hit with Hank Atomic's shrink o ray. All the more reason to keep on digging. Oh, there's gotta be more to life than puny carrots. Look, Ro look, Roxy. Luca and I have places to be, so if you don't mind. Oh, I do mind. I'm not gonna catch hell again because of you. So either you march yourself home and harvest those carrots, or I haul you home myself. Rolo froze as Roxy took a step toward him, cracking her knuckles. Luca knew he had one chance to save his friend from being dragged home. Uh, well, I guess we have the one option. In the past, he found the best way to deal with an enraged Roxy was to be a little chill. Come on, Roxy, it's the first day of summer. The sun's shining. We, we just want to take it easy. Let's leave tomorrow's problems for tomorrow. Yeah, that's great and all, but Rolo's problems have a way of becoming my problems. And Pa always says tomorrow's work is best left for yesterday. March, you big oaf. Oh, rats. I expect a full report about the Valentine place. A full report! Well... So there's a branch here in the story where we could have saved Rolo potentially and gone there to, gone there together. If only we could find the right verbs. Although I guess, you know, they're not really... You know what I mean. So, Fitz. What are you up to this lovely day? Nope. Cool, cool, cool. 
So clearly a standing vibe between the two of them. Sharper Valentine, founder of Beacon Pines. That's a heck of a name for a dapper gentleman. Never underestimate what a great man can do, given time. A bit much, if you ask me. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. So hold on. Before we go over there, we're coming back down here. This is a cute little flower stall. <gasps> no touching the giant watermelon. Okay, I'm not going to touch. We're just going to look. No! Well, I'm okay, well, nothing bad. I am going to touch it again. Can I, can I do this fast enough to play a tune? Well, okay then. That's probably not the word that we, <laughs> that we need to deal with Roxy. Hey Griffin, how's the ice cream gig going? Not great. It's still pretty cold out. And I'm in the business of selling cold. Well, I'm sure things will warm up soon. Mr. Tolliver's not at his grocery stand? Uh, he's prepping for the festival, I guess. Gotcha. Hold on. I'm gonna play you I'm gonna play you a work song. It's gonna make the days just speed by. It'd be easier if I had any control over the tone. Hey Bert. Hi, Luca. I'm doing some fact-checking for the town history exhibit. Look, kid, I'm just here to put up the lights. But did you know when the town was founded, there were only seven citizens? And they all worked for a mining company. And there was only one dirt road leading to town. And there still is only one road leading to town. Oh, right. I sort of love, I, I, I'm in love with you. I love every character that we've encountered so far. I am going to go hit the watermelon one additional time. Perfect. That was it. That was the right one. Actually, am I allowed to, we're allowed to go up this street, right? There is a sign indicating as such. <gasps> oh, look at the bat. Hey, Dawn. Sorry to wake you. Hmm. Okay, that is very high-pitched and adorable, and I cannot do that with my voice. No problem, it comes with the job. Dawn had dreams of becoming a big-time reporter. At night, she searched for the story that could be her big break. By day, she hawked papers at the newsstand. Does not leave a lot of time for sleeping, as we're seeing here. So what's up? Rolo said he saw something strange going on at the warehouse. You know anything about that? Hmm, you might say I've heard some things. I'm working on a story about it right now. So, what's going on? Well, I can't say quite yet. I still need to follow up on a few leads. Well, keep me in the loop, okay? Sure thing. Things seem to be quiet in town today. Yep, everyone's preparing for the festival. Should be back to normal tomorrow. Catch you then? Catch you then. Oh, oh, and Luca. I'm really sorry I haven't been able to find out anything about your mom yet. I, I'm just grateful that you tried. Well, I'm still keeping my ears up. They literally won't go in any other position, so... It feels like... It's very sweet, but it also feels like a lot to lay on a poor... A poor bat child. Is there anything? Nope, I'm not even allowed to check those bushes over there. Fine. Hmm, guess Mrs. Fratelli is getting ready for the festival. I'm glad we came this way. Dawn's adorable. Hey, Solomon. Uh, apologies, no time for chit-chat. Okay. Solomon's got important work to do on the first day of summer. Jeff's hardware closed down about a year ago. The effects of the foul harvest stretched wide. When there are no crops in the field, tractors don't need fixing. 
Ah, okay. Looks like the library hasn't opened yet. I'll check back later. See, this is this is a place where, where our young protagonist and I differ very much. How are you going to walk past a rack of books without inspecting each and every one of them? Luca, my boy, hold up a tick. Oh, hey, Mr. Nuncreed. I was just on my way to... I just sold the last jar of your grandmother's preserves. Can't stock the shelves fast enough, turns out. Well, hey, that's great, but I'm actually... I guess Juniper will just have to swing by with more of her lovely jam. Uh-huh. I don't like the... Mm. I don't love the way he's talking about my grandmother by name. Well, don't let this old man slow you down. You just remind her that she still owes me that dance. Okay, yes, I was reading the situation correctly. A promise Gran regretted the second it was made. Will do. She's a fine woman, that Juniper. Yeah, she's pretty she's pretty pretty cool, I guess. A real fine woman. Uh gotta go. Jesus Christ, dude. Don't involve me in this. The phone booth was brand new. Part of Perennial Harvest's Beacon Pines Reborn initiative. It didn't see much use. It's remarkable how quickly they were able to communicate that that dude's kind of a creep. Like, I got, I got it immediately. Oh, hey, Luca. Hey, Joey. How's the bug hunt going? Not great. Bugs have been shy this week. Bugs get shy? Oh, sure. Bugs aren't that different from people. Uh, sometimes they just want to be left alone. If you're going into Weepwood, just be careful where you step. No bug crunching. Got it. I mean, yeah. Try, try not to kill things on purpose. Just like a good rule for life. Uh, feel like we ought to be very cautious about this. Luca peeked up at the beehive. It appeared to be deserted. Hmm, that's strange. Nah, I mean, we have done some shit to bees, y'all. Foul harvest can't be good for them either. After the foul harvest destroyed their wealth and reputation, the Valentines shuttered off their estate from the rest of town. I mean, I'll say this, I guess. Foul harvest or whatever, there sure do seem to be a lot of, like, healthily blooming flowers all around. So clearly not all the plant life was affected. The Valentine Mansion loomed over every other building in town, both figuratively and literally. Gosh, there's a lot of town. All these screens are so gorgeous. Huh, I'm not even allowed to interact here. I can't even jump up, jump up on a bench. Come on now. All right, well, I guess we'll just continue on to the place we're obviously supposed to be. Can I? Nope. The path led into a small hollow at the edge of Weepwood. I wanted to take those mushrooms. This feel like a good video game inventory item kind of situation. Okay, no turning back now. Caution, electrified fence. Is that sign new? The fence thrummed with a gentle electric buzz. Okay, so what would Rolo do if he was here? Luca often asked himself what Rolo would do. So that he could rule out that option. Harsh but fair. Yeah, I'm definitely not touching that thing. Well, I feel like I'm small enough that if I crawled on my hands and knees, I'd probably be fine, right? This hole is almost as big as I am. Aha! What'd I tell you? I knew we'd be able to interact with the mushrooms. As sparks flew from the fence, the light atop that section shut off. Ah. Two bulbs remained. Is throwing mushrooms at the fence really going to help? Can I get... It's remarkably difficult to aim these. One more to go. All right, these mushrooms, I assume? The fence's buzzing gave way to silence. Okay, 
Moment of truth. I would definitely knew the old Valentine fertilizer building. I would definitely have waited outside the fence for like a just like a couple of minutes just to see if they come back on. Because if they do come back on while we're inside, it's going to be problematic. Long abandoned, the warehouse once served as the industrial heart of Beacon Pines. Now it stood only as a reminder of things left behind. The dormant building showed strange signs of life. Okay, Sorolo wasn't exaggerating for once. What's going on here? There was only one way to find out. Yeah, I guess so. Am I able to jump up on this? Wow, that smells awful. Uh, too bad Rolo's not here. He'd have no problem poking around in there. Ro Rolo loves it when things smell bad. The hose emitted a subtle sound. It was actively draining some kind of liquid. Hmm. I love his little, like, wipe your nose on your sleeve idle animation. That's very cute. I don't know if you guys have noticed yet, but I think this game is cute. What is this stuff? The water looked almost diseased. It flowed slowly into the woods. Okay, well obviously that ain't good for anybody. I should probably not be getting it all over my hooves. Hooves are like nature's boots though. It's probably it's probably fine. Locked. Luca thought he heard faint sounds coming from the other side of the door. He pressed his ear against the cold metal to hear better. A zipper? Footsteps. The sound of footsteps grew louder. H Hello? Luca, have the good sense to hide. Shit. <laughs> Alright, thank you. The heavy steel door knocked Luca to the ground. Disoriented, he looked up to see an imposing figure silhouetted in a green glow. It lunged toward him. He tried to scramble away, but felt a gloved hand latch onto his ankle. Luca watched his fingernails leave trails in the dirt as the hand slowly dragged him back through the door, into the lab, into the green light. This is a story about... Oh, I was really hoping I was going to be able to use the shit. This is a story about change. It was far from the sort of change Luca imagined for himself. But change is, after all, a dangerous animal. The end? I probably should have warned you about this. There are many paths that our story can take. Most will end in tragedy. But don't let that discourage you. We will find the ending that this story deserves. I just know it. From here on out, a charm will have a check mark when it's been used to its full potential at a given turning point. Now, let's try something different. Okay. I think maybe that's a good place to call it for today. I think I think that's that's where we're ending this episode. So, my intention with this thing is to have another hour of gameplay roughly every weekday until we have found the ending that this story deserves. Uh, thank you all so much for watching. When you come back next time tomorrow, we're going to try very hard not to get this child murdered again. And we'll see you then.